Anesthesia Workstation by Drs. Kelly and Stephen Heap. Healthcare workers in all healthcare settings should always adhere to the latest World Health Organization guidelines on hand hygiene and barrier precautions before and after contact with a patient, bodily fluids, or patient surroundings. For more information, please watch our video entitled Hand Hygiene. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Heat. And I'm Dr. Kelly Price. Today, this video will describe the recommended setup for your anesthesia workstation prior to intubation or induction of general anesthesia of a child. Introduction. Today we'll be using the mnemonic SOAP-M, S-O-A-P-M. S standing for suction, O for oxygen, A for airway, P for pharmacy, and M for machine. These are all essential components to your anesthesia workstation setup and should be checked and verified immediately prior to intubation or induction of general anesthesia. Suction. Suction is an essential piece of equipment that must be immediately available. Aspiration is always a major concern and the ability to manage secretions is key in successful airway management. Vacuum source must be located and verified to be functional. Tubing connected to the source should be inspected for obvious defects, leaks, obstructions, or kinks. Tubing must be of sufficient length to reach the patient with enough slack to manipulate freely. Appropriate suction device, such as Yankauer suction tip or soft suction catheter, is connected to the end of the tubing and must be kept in immediate reach of the provider. Manual verification of functioning suction should always be performed. Oxygen. Immediate availability of oxygen is critical in preparing for intubation and induction of general anesthesia. Oxygen is supplied to the anesthesia machine by a central source. Functioning of the central source can be assessed by reading the pipeline oxygen pressure display on the anesthesia machine. A backup source of oxygen in this setting is located on the back of the anesthesia machine in an E-cylinder. This should be opened briefly to verify sufficient oxygen pressure in the backup tank. Oxygen E-cylinder pressures should be at least 1,000 PSI, indicating the cylinder is at least half full. No matter what setting you're practicing in, oxygen supply must be identified and checked for sufficient amount. Ideally, a backup source of oxygen should be immediately available and verified, particularly if an oxygen concentrator is the primary source of oxygen. It is essential to have sufficient length of oxygen tubing to reach the patient from a secondary source of oxygen. Airway. Airway equipment, including non-invasive ventilation equipment, laryngoscopes, endotracheal tubes, laryngeal mask airways, and other backup airway devices must be checked immediately prior to intubation and induction of general anesthesia. Ambu bag or Mapleson circuit must be available and inspected for proper function. Oral and or nasal airways appropriately sized for your patient should be available. Oral and nasal airway size can be approximated by comparing the device to the length between the patient's mouth or nose and the angle of the jaw. Laryngoscopes must be checked to ensure proper functioning of light source. A blade one size smaller and one size larger should also be available. An endotracheal tube of the appropriate size must be available and inspected for defects and functioning of the cuff. Endotracheal tube size can be estimated by age divided by four plus four. Cuffed endotracheal tubes should be sized one half size smaller. Endotracheal tubes one size smaller and one size larger 
should also be available at the time of induction and intubation. Laryngeal mask airways or other supraglottic airway devices may be considered in some cases and should be available for emergency airway management. An appropriately sized laryngeal mask airway should be selected based on age, weight, and clinical judgment. If difficult airway is anticipated, consider availability of additional equipment, including an endotracheal tube introducer, fiber optic scope, or other equipment available at your institution. Point of clarification. It is important to be aware of the location of the difficult airway cart in your operating room suite. Pharmacy. Drugs should be available for induction of anesthesia, vasopressors or inotropes, and atropine to support hemodynamics, as well as neuromuscular blocking agents to facilitate endotracheal intubation or to treat laryngospasm. Appropriately selected antibiotics should be available in the operating room prior to incision. In addition, syringes and needles should be prepared for drawing up and administering in medications. Machine. Assuming a complete anesthesia machine checkout has been performed within the previous 24 hours, it is prudent to briefly verify the functioning of the anesthesia machine, confirming oxygen delivery and the ability to deliver and release positive pressure ventilation. Availability and inspection of standard ASA monitors must also be performed. Temperature, blood pressure monitoring, with a non-invasive blood pressure cuff appropriately sized for your patient, EKG monitoring, pulse oximetry, and, and tidal CO2. So materials to secure intravenous access must also be immediately available. These include tape, alcohol prep pads, tourniquet, and appropriately sized IV catheter. Materials for ensuring normothermia, including blankets, a forced air warming device, or plastic wrap. Point of clarification. It is important to be aware of the location of the resuscitation cart, including the defibrillator, in your operating room suite. We have reviewed the basic setup for your anesthesia workstation prior to induction of general anesthesia in a child. These include suction, oxygen, airway, pharmacy, and machine, easily remembered by the mnemonic SOAP-M. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.